Hi everyone. In this video, I'm gonna walk through practice problem inventory 05. Um, this one's gonna just be about how cost flows affect the financial statements. And, and on top of that, um, how we can do some inventory analysis. Let's dive on in. All right, so here we go. First up, cost flows in the balance sheet. This is just a simple multiple choice. Under which cost flow method or methods is the ending inventory balance on a company's balance sheet not perfectly accurate? Um, and so you have A through D. It's our four typical cost flow methods. Um, take a moment, pause the video, see if you can answer it. Come back when you're ready for me to walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So uh, which of the following methods is uh, not perfectly accurate? Well, I can tell you this, specific identification method is perfectly accurate because you're tracking each unit and you already know the cost of each unit and you track it in, you track it out, and therefore COGS is accurate, therefore ending inventory is accurate and your essential balance sheet is the most accurate. Now, why did I take the time to explain all that? Well, because the other three, the other three are inaccurate. Um, they are assumptions. They are not specific one-to-one -one identification. Um, in each of these, you make some generalization about how your units should flow in the system. And, and therefore, all three of them um, increase some sort of uh, uh, level of inaccuracy in, in your balance sheet and in your inventory balance. So all three of those are, are not perfectly accurate, where specific identification is. All right, next up, another multiple choice for you. Um, in a period of inflation, the cost flow method that results in the lowest income taxes is what? Uh, take a moment, pause the video, see if you can figure this out. I'll give you a hint draw a graph, okay? Um, see if you can figure it out, come back when you're ready, and uh, I'll walk you through the solution. All right, welcome back. So here we go. I told you hint, draw a graph, and the graph I'm, I'm referring to is the graph I did in my lecture, where you simply have um, price on the y-axis, and you have time on the x-axis, and of course, it tells you here that we are dealing with a period of inflation. And so we're dealing with this chart. Um, and it says, which method results in the lowest income taxes? All right, now this requires us to use a little bit of our, our income statement knowledge. Um, what we want is income tax expense to be low. Well, for income tax to expense to be low, your income before taxes needs to also be low, which means in, in the terms of uh, cost of goods sold, which is what we're dealing with in this entire topic, um, for income before taxes to be low, uh, your, your expenses have to be higher, and specifically, your COGS needs to be higher. So high COGS leads to low income tax, income before taxes, which leads to low income taxes. Um, all right, but we're not at the answer to the question. We know we need high COGS. So then the question is, in a period of inflation, where is high COGS? Well, in a period of inflation, um, high prices are here, which means we want cost of goods sold to come from this area of the graph. So what we're saying is we want our cost of goods sold to come from uh, the uh, later in time merchandise or the more recent merchandise. Another way to think of that is the last merchandise in. So what's the answer to this one? It's LIFO. Um, we want the LIFO method in a period of inflation if we want to lower our income taxes because uh, in a period of inflation, we will drive up our cost of goods sold by using LIFO, which will drive down our income, drive down our taxes. All righty, that's it for that one. Moving on, balance sheet inventory valuation. Tiger Core has the following inventory on hand at year end. Determine the value of inventory Tiger Core should report on its balance sheet under the lower of cost or market rule. All right, so uh, 
Take a moment, pause the video, see if you can figure this one out. Remember, lower cost or market rule is not complicated. It is about as straightforward as accounting can possibly be sometimes. So um, uh, try this out, come back when you're ready. I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So here we go. Lower of cost or market rule simply says that um, you must value your goods at whichever is cheaper, the market rate or, or, or your original cost. Um, basically, everything's gonna go on your books at cost. Cost has to be below market rate or you wouldn't be doing very good with your inventory because that means you'd never be able to sell it as a profit. So cost is always gonna start lower than market rate. Um, the problem is when market rate drops lower than cost, then your inventory is, is basically impaired. It has lost value. You need to knock it down a notch. And so we just have to go through our table here and we have to identify what, what is higher. Is it the cost or is it the market? Or I say what is lower is really what we need to know. So for the widgets, uh, the market price is lower. Um, for the what's it's, the cost price is lower. Um, for the doodads, they're the same, so it doesn't matter. And for the flim flams, the market price is lower. So we've identified across the board which one has the lower price, and now it's simply a matter of multiplication. So I'm gonna add a little totals column over here. And so I've got my um, 100 units at uh, $80 a piece, and so that's gonna come out to $8,000. Um, I have 1,000 units at the lower prices, $12 a piece. So that comes out to $12,000. I've got 200 units at $45 a piece. And here, market books, they're the same. It doesn't really matter. And so um, 200 units at 45 a piece comes out to $9,000. And then finally, I've got 60 units, uh, sorry, 250 units at $50 a piece. And so 250 times 50, that comes out to 12,500. And so pull my calculator out one more time. We've got 8,000 plus 12,000 plus 9,000 plus 12,500. That puts us at a grand total inventory of 41,500. And that is the answer to the question that has been asked. Under lower cost of market rule, you simply use the rate that is the lower of the two. Multiply it times the units, add everything together. That's ending inventory, or at least that's what it should be. You may still have to mark it down to get there. All right, and finally, inventory analysis. So in our lectures, we talked about two calculations you do to analyze inventory, the inventory turnover ratio, as well as the days in inventory. Um, so here it says Flyer Inc.'s accounting system shows be uh, the below information related to cost flows and in inventory for 2018 and 19. Um, it says determine Flyer Inc.'s inventory turnover ratio and days in inventory for 2019. And then, of course, uh, while these things do have an objective meaning, they're, they're more helpful when you can compare them to something. So then it tells you if inventory turnover for Flyer Inc.'s industry is four for a similar amount of inventory. What does this analysis tell you about, about Flyer Inc.? All right, so as with all the others, take a moment, pause, try to do it on your own. And when you're ready, come back and I will walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So here we go. First off, we can't calculate inventory turnover ratio unless we know how it's calculated. So let's focus on that first. Uh, inventory turnover ratio is cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. All right, now this problem tries to trick you a little bit because it gives you cost of goods purchased, cost of goods available for sale, and cost of goods sold. You have to really know which one you're after in order to do this problem. Um, and so it did tell us to solve for 2019, so I'm gonna grab the 2019 cost of goods sold, which is $230,000. And I need to put that over average inventory. All right, well, it gave us inventory right here. Um, and, and notice, it again, maybe it tried to trick us, maybe it's just there for the heck of it. Um, it gave us supplies. S supplies is meaningless in this problem um, and, and pretty meaningless in all of inventory conversations. So uh, you can ignore that. It was just extraneous information, just like cost of goods purchased and available for sale. 
So we have our inventory, 34,000 this year, 41,000 last year. So 34,000 plus 41,000 all over two. 34,000 plus 41,000 divided by two puts us at 37,500 on the bottom. So 230,000 over 37,500. Uh, 230 two, 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 divided by 37,500 gives us an inventory turnover of about six. In fact, I'm, I'm just gonna call it six, okay? Um, and, and that's how you do the inventory turnover ratio. The next question was um, uh, to figure out days in inventory, and that's real easy. Once you have inventory turnover, days in inventory is simply uh, 365 over your turnover ratio, in this case, six. And so if I bring my calculator out, 365 divided by six comes out to approximately 61 days. And so um, Flyer Inc., uh, first of all, objectively, not, not comparatively, but objectively, um, how are they doing as far as inventory turnover? They're turning it over every two months. Um, I don't know, that sounds pretty good. That, that's an inventory turnover uh, that, that I could get behind. If you're turning your inventory over every, every two months, you're, you're doing a pretty good job at moving it. Um, on the other hand, I did tell you in the problem that inventory turnover for Flyer Inc.'s industry is four for a similar amount of inventory. So what does this analysis tell you about, about, about Flyer Inc.? So Flyer Inc. is six, um, uh, the industry is, is four. So that tells you that Flyer Inc. is turning its inventory over more than the industry. Um, and, and so that's a good thing. Um, another way of thinking about it is in terms of the days, um, 365 divided by, um, sorry, not divided by six, but divided by four, 365 divided by four, implies that it's taking approximately 91 days for the industry to turn over its inventory. And uh, uh, Flyer Inc. here is only taking 61 days. So they're taking one entire less month to turn over their inventory than essentially their competitors. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the takeaway from doing that comparative analysis. In this case, you would say, oh, you know what? Flyer Inc., at least as it concerns its inventory, looks like it's doing a better job than, than the rest of its, its peers. All right. That is it for now. So I'm not going to be recording any other inventory practice problems at the moment. That, that isn't to say I won't make more later. Uh, hope you enjoyed these practice problems. Hope they helped you. And I hope you have a great day.